Welcome back guys to a brand new Sea of Thieves video. Now today I'm going to be sharing with you some amazing information of what's to come after the brand new free content update we have just had, the Curse Sales. Now I hope you guys are enjoying the Curse Sales as much as I am. I'm loving it so, so much. It's great that we've got like a new AI threat roaming the seas with us. And the idea of how it's just bringing players together more and more on the seas. Just like how it worked with the Megalodon. I just think it's absolutely great. And a massive shout out to Sea of Thieves and Rare for just that, you know, just so much hard work going through with this content updates and stuff. It's amazing. And that is why I've decided to make this video share with you guys the new news you need to know about what's to come next for Sea of Thieves if you're someone that is really just like wanting to know what's happening next. Now one of the big things you will know already, some of you may not know about this, but there is already confirmed that there is going to be a brand new free content update next coming in September, which is the um, which is the Forsaken Shores. That is going to be amazing. I will be going into what's coming with that as well in this video and some stuff after it. So I hope you guys do enjoy. If you do, as always, make sure to drop a like on this video. If we can try and smash over 400 likes, that would be absolutely amazing. And be subscribed for more Sea of Thieves Ark and other survival games, because there's going to be lots of other stuff, awesome stuff coming, as well as more Sea of Thieves, if that's what you're into. Have those notifications turned on as well, guys, so you never miss out on a video. And let's get straight in with this. So obviously, what's to come after the curse sales for Sea of Thieves? So obviously there is a limited time campaign within um, Sea of Thieves and that happened, that exactly the same thing happened with the um, Hungering Deep and the same thing is with the Cursed Sails. But again, do not worry guys because the skeleton ships will stay in the game as exactly the same as the Megalodon, Megalodon did and that is what I find so great because every single free content update we're getting, we're getting a new AI threat and we're also get, getting whether that, you know, it's either a boss or an AI threat and they're always staying in the game and it's fantastic because there's so much we can do and I cannot wait to be seeing what is next within the Forsaken Shores. So obviously getting into that right now for you, the Forsaken Shores. So the Forsaken Shores is the other piece of the Sea of Thieves DLC that was announced at E3. But this one arrives in September. Because Rare has a set up like three different teams, soon to be four, to work on Sea of Thieves content at, at the same time, the Forsaken Shores will be the largest expansion to date, bringing with it like a new area for players to explore. So this is the very exciting thing about the Forsaken Shores, is that obviously they've been setting out different teams, they had a team working on the Hungering Deep, but people at the Hungering Deep really did not have as much time as the people of the Cursed Cells and the Forsaken Shores, and obviously with the Forsaken Shores it's not coming out till September, so they've had so long now to work on it, which is why I'm so excited, because it's going to be the largest and biggest expansion so far for the game. So the Devil's Roar is the new area, a volcanic and very dangerous place which players will need to travel to. As they still continue to spawn in the three original regions, um, you know, there's, it's going to be something you're going to have to end up going to, which is, as I said, it is called Devil's Roar. And players will need to take this into account when anchoring their ship, uh, lest it get damaged by a volcano raining down fire and fury. So... When, like, this is going to be another, like, way that your ship can be damaged, because when you're, um, on the seas and stuff, you have the normal attack of being attacked by any a a AI threat, sorry, I couldn't even speak there, and obviously anyone else on the seas, but now, with this new area, Devil's Roar, huge volcanoes will, like, come down and, like, just explode on your boat and everything like that, and that will do damage to it, so you'll have to be constantly repairing. I think it's going to be very, very hard for someone that's in a sloop, if you're either on your own, that is going to be a very, very hard mission doing that solo, or if you're with even, like, a duo on a on a sloop, it's going to be amazingly hard, so definitely bring, bring a big crew with you to do this. So to make the trek from the ship and to land easier, especially given the distance, players will need to anchor the ship. A rowboat has been revealed as another large tool for players to use. The rowboat will serve as a way for players to move through water and the developers are expecting to see the rowboat used in ways they haven't imagined. Some users may meant, uh, well, so, like basically some users, sorry, mentioned were to be able to fill it up with gunpowder barrels and use it to board a skeleton ship or just fill it with treasure and make one trip back to the ship instead of multiple. So the, I am actually so hyped for the rowboat because it's been like, revealed as a large 
large tool, not as like a ship, because it is obviously a rowboat, it's something small, and you're going to be able to have this to be able to make quick trips from different islands, and again, obviously, let's say there's some skeleton ships, you and some of your crew can get into a rowboat, put some gunpowder in it, quickly go over there, throw the gunpowder in, get straight back into your rowboat, it'll obviously shoot the gunpowder, and then make and evacuate, like, it's going to be awesome, and the same thing of being able to just go to an island, get as much treasure as you possibly can, and instead of having to hold it and swim back to your ship with, um, you know, obviously with the treasure, throw it all onto the rowboat, row back to your boat, and obviously throw it onto there, which is fantastic. Don't really know the idea of where you can put the rowboat afterwards, if you're going to be able to, I don't know, just, like, hook it onto your um, ship as it is already, or, you know, break it down as, like, holding onto it. I really don't know. That's going to be something we're going to be finding out a little bit further on. So, during a round table with some members of the community, the question was passed around about having more things to do at sea when sailing between islands. Joe confirmed that the team at Rare have heard this request a lot, and um, it is currently a second priority behind getting the other content ready. However, he did reveal that there would be an activity you can do out the sea to pass time. Later on into the video, when another member of the community asked about fishing, Joe commented, that certainly sounds like something you can do out at the sea, but all confirms that obviously it's second priority is, you know, further, you know, further on from the content that's being worked on at the moment, which is fantastic. I completely agree with this with Sea of Thieves. There's quite a few like little holes and gaps they do need to patch up, which they are working on. You know, they're working on making this game perfect. You know, I, I, I mean, there's been five million players that play this and I see a lot of people comment still at the moment that you know <coughs> um like, you know, so many people saying that, like, you know, I don't play this, I don't understand how 5 million people play it and everything. I, I, it's, you know, there's 5 million players for a reason, because it's a great game. And I know right at the start, it wasn't the most perfect game, there was, you know, not a lot to do. But that is being patched up more and more and more. We've got great content coming up with the Forsaken Shores bringing in a whole new place. And the idea of being able to add fishing into Sea of Thieves as well, which hopefully you'll be able to use that and then use that as food as well. So not just bananas, which would be fantastic. So definitely more things to do while traveling to your next location would be great because you know having the more of a free roam element to the game is definitely something I personally agree with it's something that needs to happen because like um, you, the more the more the free roam the more people are going to enjoy it because they can do whatever they want so maybe they've got a mission to do and they really cannot be bothered for the long trip across the map just something funny they can do like fishing or any other activities that could possibly be added in would be absolutely fantastic so, moving on to the next stuff, future plans and unconfirmed content. Now, we're getting like re uh, to the really unconfirmed content, things that aren't even in development, but which Rare have acknowledged as being there on their radar. Anything that flows might never make it into the game, but at least we know Rare is thinking about it. So, what we do know is there is a roadmap which is completely confirmed there's going to be more free content coming up. We know that for 100% definite, guys, so don't worry about that. There's still lots more coming, but it's just not confirmed. So there's a lot of rumours going on at, you know, going on at the moment which has been, like, talked about in different interviews with the guys at Rare. So, at present, if players have two large groups of friends who want to play with each other they and they have to separate and go onto different servers... Outside of finding another ship and asking the stranger if they'd mind letting their friends join them, there is no way to get these two large parties together. There is a wealth of problems that have come with allowing two large galleons to team up on a server, but at least Rare has heard this and it's obviously, um, you know, as their wish. So, you know, you could have a group of like eight friends that want to play Sea of Thieves together, but unfortunately you can only play it with four. But there are, you know, hopefully plans that they're going to be bringing in different alliances and different stuff like that, which I'll be talking about a little bit more. Another item the developers mentioned is the idea of, like, obviously, as I said, being able to, like, be able to create alliances in-game with other players. The idea has been that there would be, like, a more concrete agreements between players to share rewards as opposed to just the honor system. It was an idea Rare toyed with, so there's no telling where we might see it in the game in the future or not. Now, again, something, as I said, I completely agree with this. Like, I do like the idea in a way because it makes the game interesting of, let's say, you make an alliance with someone... Um 
just without any like certain feature in the game and then they end up betray betraying you taking the rewards and everything then that is obviously a very bad thing to happen but maybe there could be the element of being able to sign like a like in in game you can all sign as a crew this like little contract which binds you together in the sea of thieves land which means if it's broken you would lose the rewards or something crazy like that and then there's still the idea of people saying right we both won't sign the contract but i trust you and you trust me and that that's how I think that could be a good thing into the game. So one element that the developers did mention and somewhat confirm is that Sea of Thieves is a pirate fantasy and so they will explore different enemy types just beyond skeletons. More shanties is another topic that Rare seem to recognise is desired and something they would like to do and can be seen with Merrick shanty now being included in the rotation. Furthermore, the idea of a player being having, you know, having, well, well, one player having a different shanty to another, but the other one can harmonise with them is an idea they love. So that's a great thing. It's a, it's a pirate fantasy game, and they want to explore different enemy types just beyond skeletons. We want more. We, you know, skeletons are great. Skeleton ships then were absolutely fantastic. But the idea of different creatures. We have the megalodon. We have the kraken. What else could be explored? Not just different bosses like the megalodon and the kraken, as I said, but other AIs in the game rather than skeletons would be fantastic too. And you know, anything around the pirate fantasy that was in there, which there's still so much like. I remember from like Pirates of the Caribbean and stuff I would love to see in the game and more shanties we all want it it's, it's absolutely great so I'm fan you know I'm really looking forward to that Joe also discussed that the team have worked um, that works on the Hungering Deep are already hard at work at the next piece of content. Joe confirmed that he's really excited about what they are working on as it's part of the game. Um, that you know what the game needs to be enriched further. Based on what we know about Sea of Thieves, my guess that that would be an underwater portion of the game that needs more attention. So hopefully, the fourth piece of free content will expand the world below the surface of the ocean. Again. I think that's great. Uh, I mean, I don't know what I think about having a more of an underwater role to things. Maybe you can go to like Atlantis. I'm, I'm just making that up. But just something cool like that. Maybe some underwater cities. That could be going way too far and way out of the reach of a pirate game. But it's not down to me. It's up to what the community wants and it's up to what Rare wants. So I'm excited to see more about that. As for microtransactions um, with, uh, you know, pets and stuff, they are coming, but it's currently on the back burner as Rare wants to maintain focus on free content in the world and they don't really want to be getting involved with uh, microtransactions and stuff at the moment because you guys know everyone doesn't like microtransactions. People want free. Everyone loves free, but the company does need to make more money in a way. Just think of Fortnite. I know they made their game completely free, um, which is great, and they've you know they're making multi millions, hundreds of millions of uh, dollars off these microtransactions, and it's a great thing for developers when they create games because they do put a lot of hard work in this. And in a way, you know, Sea of Thieves is on the Game Pass, so if you do pay for the Game Pass, you're kind of getting it for free in a way. So that is very very interesting there. So finally, Rare prototyped a crouching mechanic that removed the player's gamer tag, but it's not currently on the roadmap. Interestingly, the emotes have been currently filled with the role of as um, of sneaky players, basically. Um, when like that, that would be good. Like being able to like the crouching mechanic and everything, like more of a sneaky element into the game because I wouldn't I mean you guys may disagree with me but I think that they like the idea of like sneaking and stuff in the game there isn't you can still do it definitely don't get me wrong you can go right under the water and like attack someone but there still needs a new sneaky like element to it which makes it more exciting and more like sneaky if you guys understand what I mean but anyway, that really is going to be coming to the end of the video. I don't really have much else to share with you guys with the future of the Sea of Thieves uh, currently. But that is all that the news that we've been told with the game. And I think it's great. I am so, so hyped to see what Rare have got in store for us. The Curse Sales is amazing. The Forsaken Shores, Shores is coming out in September. So not long away for that. So we just got to enjoy the Curse Sales so we can grind out the game. And uh, look forward to seeing what is coming next for Sea of Thieves. Thank you for watching guys, as I said, drop a like if you enjoyed, let's try and hit over 400 likes, subscribe if you did enjoy, and turn on those notifications, and I'll see you guys in my next video, see you guys later.